end. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity Halton Peel in this beautiful Palm Sunday morning and beautiful sun is shining out there. I can hardly wait to get out and feel that on my face. <laughs> Let's uh, share the centering thought um, while we come together uh, on this beautiful day. The infinite mind of God fills my awareness yes. with all the right ideas for all the people who come and will come to Unity Halt and Peel. We gratefully follow the guidance. It is so, and so it is. And together repeat our mission to lovingly inspire transformation and be of service to the world. And Jane, I would ask you to read the daily word, please. Thank you. Are you there, Jane? Oh, you've muted yourself. Sorry. I'll get it. I'll get it, Jane. You're still muted, Jane. There, sorry. is that, is that working? That's, yeah, sorry, oh. I told you I had control of that. Go ahead. Um, the daily word for Palm Sunday. As I enter Holy Week, I reflect on Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and how the multitudes greeted him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Like so many, I have used the sacred time of Lent to cleanse my soul and beliefs and habits that no longer serve me. I have felt blessed as I have opened my heart to the healing, cleansing waters of spirit. Now I feel ready to welcome a greater awareness of the Christ within me. Every part of me quivers with eager anticipation. The world seems fresh and I feel newly alive. I behold the Christ in me and in all others. With joy, I celebrate. With gratitude, I humbly bless the Christ in me and in everyone. And from Matthew 21, verse 9, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Reverend Barbara, may we call on you, please, for an opening prayer. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> so let us join together in consciousness as we begin today's service. As I take a breath and relax, I recognize and acknowledge that there is a presence and power in life and in the world that is beyond my comprehension, vast in scope. An energy of love and peace and goodness, and it is the very force of life that is within each and every one of us. So as we come together today, as we begin Holy Week, we do so with a sense of possibility and creativity as we imagine a new world order, as we begin to see things transformed in ways that are beautiful and life-giving. We take the teachings of Jesus, the Christ, and we know that that teaching is one of love. Love one another. Love life. So in this moment, we come together with a deep sense of love of gratitude, deep sense of joy and celebration, for this really is a new beginning. And with that in mind, I release these ideas into the law, knowing it is done. All is well. And so it is. Amen. Lead us 
us away Temptations hold Deliver us, Lord, into your fold For all the kingdom, power and praise With you began and with you stay Holy Creator, our Father who art in heaven Praise your name Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For all the kingdom, power and praise with you began and with you stay. Thanks, Patty. Well, today we're talking about the awakening. I think probably all of us can feel there's a, a real shift in the year. Probably, you know, when I think about Palm Sunday, I think about the changes that were coming in the life of Jesus, in the life of humanity, really, at that point. And it's interesting to think about those things now when we look at the world the way it is and the transformation, I think, that is required right now for us to ensure that the generations ahead will actually have an earth to live on. So we're coming into a whole new way of being. And there's a, a there's something more going on than what we can see, think, or feel. And I was thinking about a story that I read in a book called Birthing the Nation of Gaia. And it was the story of the caterpillar. And most of us know the story of the caterpillar, but I'm going to share what Sharif Abdullah wrote because it talks a little bit, I think, about the way we are morphing into a new experience at this point. And so he asks the question, what is the purpose of the caterpillar? So we may view the caterpillar as destroying our garden. However, from the point of view of the entire caterpillar butterfly life cycle, the purpose of the caterpillar is to collect, process, and store energy as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. But does the caterpillar know this? Hmm. Does it think about its purpose or does it think about uh, the taste of the single leaf in front of it? It's probably focused on that leaf. Does it think that it's part of a process or does it think that it's a lone individual? Does it think about its role in the web of life or does it think about the eternal now? Does it think it's entering a new phase or does it think it's dying? Or maybe it doesn't think at all. Presumably, the caterpillar does not think about the purpose of being a caterpillar. And just like many of us don't think about the purpose of being human. But life does have a purpose. Each one of us has a purpose here on Earth. And for the last 10,000 years or so, we haven't actually realized that purpose. <laughs> just like the caterpillar eating its way through the garden, I think we have progressively eaten our way through the experience of living on planet Earth and made a few errors along the way. And we know if the caterpillar was left unchecked, it would just eat every leaf on the planet. 
But of course, there's a moment when it stops and it shuts down and then it becomes this goo inside of this little uh, encasing, whatever you want to call it, go through that metamorphosis where it becomes nothing and then is reborn as the butterfly. And, uh, you know, trying to get people housed and all the things that are going on, it can feel really confusing and overwhelming. And then we've got the issue of pronouns, like, what's that all about? People are, you know, she, they, he, what, him. There's so much going on. How do we, how do we begin to live in this new reality? And how do we open up to the things that we don't fully understand yet? And I think we're really, this is really, truly a metamorphosis. And I think that if we can surrender into it and allow this divine guidance to carry us, when you think about Jesus coming into Jerusalem, it was a celebration. But he knew, he knew what was coming. I don't think the caterpillar necessarily knows that it will dissolve into the nothingness and be reborn as the butterfly. But doesn't that just speak to the story of Jesus? Creating all of this stuff to dissolve into the nothingness and to be reborn. And when I think about when I think about that story, when I think about the life of Jesus and, and everything that was done or that we know about. Right, Because remember, the people who wrote about him actually didn't know him. They're writing from memory or from stories. Or... But there's, there's something that happens there. There's a life that's lived. There's a, a, a metamorphosis that occurs. And then life again. And that happens organically. And yet somehow we're living in a way that is you know, we're kind of in a throwaway society right now. We're overproducing and underusing and depleting the energy of our planet and the sustainability for all of us. So what we must do at some point in time is sit back and go, what is my role? So when you think about the caterpillar, the caterpillar is not thinking about, you know, what is, what is my next thing or what is the next thing I'm going to do? And I think many of us as human beings, we kind of go through our life and we earn a living and we raise our families and we clean house and cook and we do whatever we need to do. But are we thinking about the collective? Are we living in a way that is, you know, creating that harmony amongst all people? Uh, not only all people, but are we treating the earth well? Are we treating animals well? Are we, have we realized our oneness? And you know, we talk about our oneness, but have we realized it? And I don't think we're quite there yet, although some of us may be, but I think as a whole, we'll see a shift in our planet when we see a shift in consciousness that impacts everything. And then what will occur, I believe, is like jump time. There'll be a moment where everything is one way and then boom, it's another way. And if you think about when the Berlin Wall came down, there was a bunch of things that happened that brought that point but it turns out there were all miscommunications and all of a sudden the wall is coming down and people are confused. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> Where, but there had been, there had been that metamorphosis underneath. There'd been something bubbling up from inside going, come on, come on, let's move, let's move. And all of a sudden, bang, there it is. When we're going through these big changes, more often than not, we don't see them coming but they're coming. We might feel a little unsettling or we might feel something inside of us that's that's kind of prompting us. Maybe we're feeling a little uneasy or we're kind of you know restless trying to figure out what's next, now what? And we're at a place where we need to live our oneness. We need to acknowledge there is no them and us. There's only us, the collective us. There's the us that is you know, animal life, plant life, human life, the us that is the everything that exists. We teach that there's one power in the universe, one infinite source and substance. 
right? One source and substance. One, one, one. So when we're living our lives, and and I know I'm guilty of this too, you know, I'll be out driving in my car and somebody will cut me off and I'll be like, hey, what are you doing? And then I think about it and I go, okay, so that's an aspect of me. That is somebody who's moved into my lane, but I don't think they planned it in advance. So why am I so upset? Well, that's my fear jumping in and, and causing me to react. But if I acknowledge that, oh, I'm just feeling afraid, just bless them and let it go. All of a sudden, there's a change and a shift in the way that I process information, the way I show up in the world, which then has an impact far greater than just me. Because when you consider the fact that we are all spiritual broadcasting systems, all right, the energy that we are is tapped into all energy. There's no separation. There's no them and us here and there. Everything is now and everything is one. Now, that's a bit of a mind bender, I know. I've been doing this for years and still wrapping our mind around the idea of oneness. I had an experience a couple of weeks ago that was so traumatizing. And it was, we were driving along a roadway and the car in front of us swerved into oncoming traffic. And then we saw a body fly through the air and land in front of our car. And I quickly yanked the wheel and didn't hit this woman, thank goodness. Although the car behind me did. When we got out of the car and, and when I checked on her, at first she was unconscious and then she started to come around, but she went to the hospital with life in, life, yeah, life challenges for sure. And what's interesting is that when that happened, I mean, it was so shocking that it took a long time to kind of even sit in it. But then I called a friend of mine who's a Buddhist. And what she did was take me through a meditation and, and take me just deep into the essence of the greater truth and reminded me that this woman that I was with most likely at the end of her life, there was an agreement between us that this is my sister. This is a part of me, not separate from or different than, but an aspect of my being. And, and somehow we were having an experience together that was important. Whether it was important that I be with her at the end of her time or for me to awaken to a deeper sense of my time, realizing that life is, is temporary or at least our experience of life on earth is temporary. So how do we live that life and what are we doing and what are we bringing? But it was in seeing her as my sister, seeing that, you know, there was this agreement that we were going to do this together. And I think that's what we see between, you know, Judah and, and Jesus is there, there's an agreement there at some level that here's how the story is going to unfold. And if we go back to something Shakespeare said, like we're, you know, what if we're all just actors on a stage? What if everything that's happening is an opportunity for us to simply experience that all of it, all of it is constantly changing and morphing into something different, bigger, brighter, something new. What if everything that's happening is an opportunity for us to remember who we are and whose we are? And I, what, I, what I love about this season, you know, as we're going through the Lenten experience, we're letting go. And in new thought, what are we letting go of? the mental conditioning that maybe we were raised with. And that's the piece that needs to change. We're in the process of morphing into the butterfly, but it can only happen if we allow ourselves to surrender into the chrysalis, the moment of change. If we can find a way to open our hearts enough and our minds enough to go, I don't know what I don't know, but I'm willing to find out. I'm willing to be curious. I'm willing to see what's possible, right? Because when you think about the fact that there is only this one, one power, this one presence, God, and it's all powerful. Well, if it's here being me, then that must mean that I'm powerful, that you are powerful. And because each one of us is created in the image and likeness of the creator, that means all of us have within us every single thing we would ever need 
in order to accomplish the mission that we have for this life experience. We're in this together. And I think the, the metamorphosis that has to happen is the, the shift in consciousness that allows us to see each other as the Christ. I mean, intellectually, we know that. We know that within every person there is that. That's what Jesus taught. All that I shall do, you shall do in greater things. Not I'm, I'm the almighty and you're beyonds. It's like, no, I'm showing you who you are. And through this story, I'm showing you also that you are eternal. There is no death. There's a transformation. The caterpillar doesn't die. It morphs into. When we get to the end of our life, we're not dying. We are transitioning into a greater sense of something that, well, that we can't know at this point. There's something there. And all of us have probably read stories of near-death experiences and this and that. But do we believe it? Do we believe? Do we believe in the story of Jesus? It's an interesting thought, isn't it? Do I actually believe do I believe that there's a power in the universe? I can't see it. So how do I know it's real? You know, it's interesting. We have such perfect faith. We have faith in gravity, right? None of us questions that, man. We have absolute faith in gravity. Can't see it though, but we have faith in it. We have faith in electricity. You know, we go to the wall, we flip a switch, da-da, light. We don't second guess it. We don't doubt it. We know it's going to be there. We have absolute faith. And then we have faith in Murphy's Law. We have faith in, oh, something bad happened. Well, you know, it always comes in threes. We have faith in, oh, you know, when's the other shoe going to fall? When's it going to drop? We have misplaced faith. But what if we had faith in God? to the degree that we have faith in gravity. Neither can be seen, but both can be experienced. And what I love about that connection with spirit when we really acknowledge it, because we are we are spiritual beings, whether we know it or not is irrelevant, we are it. But in the moment we become aware of that, we start to realize our true potential, our true possibility. And when that happens, there's a light that goes on that's just remarkable. And we look around and it's like we see the world in a whole new way. And we begin to look at each other in a whole new way. And there's a, a story, I, I don't know who wrote it or where it came from, but a, a story of a monastery in a small town and, and it's a thriving, thriving monastery. And they're doing really well. People are always coming to visit and it's just really growing and doing well. And then it slowly fewer and fewer people start to come and the monks start kind of bickering amongst themselves and things are not going so well. And the head monk is like, I don't even know what to do. So he decides to go and see this famous guru. And he does. And this guru tells him that one of these monks is the Christ. Pretty cool information. So he goes back and he tells them, I don't know who it is, but one of you, one of you is the Christ. So what happens? They're all thinking about this. Well, we don't know which one it is, so I better treat everybody well. I better be kind to everyone. I might as well support and, and love and be generous with every one of my brothers because one of them is the Christ. Now, I don't know which one it is and I can't take a chance on you know, doing something bad to the, to the Christ. See, that's a story for all of us because in this room is the Christ. But what we don't realize is it's each one of us. 
The Christ is a consciousness of love. And it resides in all of us. And it's about tapping into it. Breathing life into it. Allowing it to express. And so when we're looking at birthing the nation of Gaia, a place of peace and harmony and love, how do we do that? Practice the teachings of Jesus the Christ. Remember what he taught. There's only one thing going on. Love. There's only one thing going on. We live, move, and have our being in it. So it's, you know, the cells of our body, the activity of minds, the life that we've lived, everything that's happened up to this moment is actually moving us in the direction of our highest, greatest potential. Everything is possible. Everything is possible because the universe says yes. God says yes to us. We're the beloved child. We're the beloved expression, the individualization of this divine essence all of us. And so as we begin to kind of live in that energy or sit in that energy, it's like, well, what does that mean to me overall? If I know, if I know that I have within me the power and potential of God, that I have the ability to live my greatest vision, my greatest potential, would I? <laughs> would you? Interesting question, isn't it? We're going through amazing change right now, a radical metamorphosis, and it feels uncomfortable. And for some, downright painful. And for others, excruciating. And for some, easy. And the only thing that defines which way we're going to experience it is the thought that we have about it. the thought that we have about it. If we're fearful, if we're angry, if we're frustrated, if we're confused, we might find it very, very painful. But if we sit back and go, well, I don't know what I don't know, so let me discover. Let me find something out. Let me, let me shift somehow. Let me go online, go to the Google and find an answer. Everything we need is right here. <clears throat> everything we need we've already had we've already had it it was given to us at our birth there's no one in this room that isn't here by divine appointment <clears throat> that everything that you have done in your life has brought you to this moment you're in the perfect place at the perfect time doing all the right stuff and what does that mean only you know and it's up to each one of us to learn to be that consciousness of the Christ. That's what this week's about. Remembering who we are. Stopping the playing small. Lying to ourselves about our potential. <clears throat> Pardon me. So many of us sit back and go, I don't know. Somebody will say, what's your purpose? I don't know. That's actually a lie because we do know. We might not be ready to face it yet, but we do know what our purpose is. And our purpose could be to birth a certain child. It could be to clean up a park. It could be to raise a family. It could be to run Zoom on Unity Halt and Peel's you know, Sunday morning. Um, whatever it is, it's all happening by divine appointment. <clears throat> Every challenge we've ever faced has brought us to this moment. We're here together for a reason. Can't tell you what it is, but there is no mistakes, no accidents. And sometimes we get misdirected, not because the universe misdirects us, but because our ego jumps in and goes, hey, I ain't doing that. Let me do something different. What we want to do is remember who we are, the Christ, and give it life. Shine that light on it. And what I want to do as we're closing is just to quickly share that uh, beginning next month, I'm going to be doing in-person services in Toronto. And so my services will be available for you to stream 
but I won't be able to come in as a guest speaker because I will be doing my service in the morning on Sunday in person. So uh, that's that's a little bit different. But again, it's part of the, the journey that we find new ways of being. But you're more than welcome to stream my service um, whenever I was booked to speak, if you so choose. All right. So let us go into a meditation. And so I invite you to just close your eyes if you're comfortable and sit, sit comfortably in your seat. And let us just drop our awareness into our heart space. And as you breathe, just allow your consciousness to go there. Just go into that heart space. And it is in this space that I want you to imagine this incredible, beautiful pink light. Just this gorgeous ball of pink light right at the center of your being. And with every breath you take, I want you to imagine that it's getting a little bit bigger. And eventually, eventually it fills your whole body. You're just this beautiful glowing pink light emanating from every pore. Every cell is lit up with this beautiful pink light. And it's continuing to expand. And you're starting to see how it touches. It touches the people in your home, in your neighborhood. It just keeps growing. And as you notice all of those around you that are now glowing with this beautiful light, that there is no separation, no here and there. All there is is the light. And each one of us in it, perfect, whole, and complete, and yet a part of all of it. Feeling that energy, awakening that awareness. Just in your own mind, tell yourself, I'm awake. I am awake. I am connected to everyone. I am connected to everything. I am connected with God. And with every breath, <clears throat> with every breath you take, just feel that connection. Feel the warmth, the comfort, and the freedom that that evokes inside of you.
Such beauty. Take a deep breath in. And as you feel ready, just begin to move your fingers and toes, bringing your awareness back to this room, to this time, but bringing all that love and all that awareness with you. All is well. And so it is. will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am stronger every moment every day my mind is willing and my heart is open wide i trust my instincts and let spirit be my guide i vow to live a life that's real and pure and free as I continue walking in this mystery, I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take, is taken in pure faith and i am grateful every moment every day there may be walls there may be roadblocks in my way but i can choose to take a higher path each day and now I know that what I thought was safe and sound was only habit and regret that held me down. I will surrender to my greatest, highest I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am kinder every moment, every day. And I'm more loving every moment, every day. I will surrender every moment, 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, Reverend Barbara. Beautiful, beautiful message this morning. Interesting. Oh, here we are, right back to the first page again. I don't know why that keeps happening. Gee whiz. Gee whiz. Okay. So thank you, everyone, for your continued support of this ministry. Uh, just a reminder of, of how to make your donations. Your Interact is the most efficient for all of us. And However, we still receive checks and occasionally we are blessed by PayPal and Canada Help. So I'm grateful for all of these sources. And as you know, we uh, are continuing to support Eating Food for Change. And on the fifth Sunday of each quarter or whenever a fifth Sunday comes up, we are going to be um, looking for a, a different organization to donate to. And, and uh, Diane Riley will be calling all of you to get some input and to also offer prayer to you. So uh, next Sunday, um, our donation is going to uh, Doctors Without Borders. So I appreciate all of you and so grateful for that input. Together, let's uh, share this blessing towards these offerings and the gifts that come to us. Divine love now flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And it is a blessing wherever it goes. So some a review of some of the announcements. The 40 days let go and let God is continuing um, through this next week. And I think that Wendy mentioned that it might even go a little bit, a week longer. Um, but please join if you're interested. And Reverend Barbara, is uh, beginning, uh, had, has already begun a class on February 28th from seven to nine o'clock at night. It's not your money. So please join if you'd like to. Spirit groups, uh, these are the, these are the um, winter spirit groups. They're finishing and we will have a, a new uh, connection for the uh, spirit groups that are going to be beginning again in uh, April. And we'll have those up uh, for you by next week. Spirit Cafe uh, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, please join online with Reverend Barbara, Cheryl Rogers, and a guest uh, speaker or guest individuals. It's always a, a compelling subject that they have to, to share and talk about. So please, if you'd like to, join them. And our Unity Prayer Chaplain, Diane Riley, is with us this morning. Thank you so much, Diane. Um, if anyone has a prayer request, please feel free to email uh, Diane in confidence. And her email is prayerwithdiane at gmail.com. Your prayers will be held with Diane in the prayer group uh, here at Unity Halt and Peel and then sent on to Unity, Silent Unity, for 30 days of prayer. And in, in the event that you would like to contact uh, the Unity, Silent Unity directly, their 800 number is at that is at the bottom of the newsletter and it's also on our website. So that those prayer teams are available for you at any time. Let's uh, take this moment to bless our children and um, we'll say this together. Children and youth of unity and of the world, we love you, we bless you, and we appreciate you just the way you are. I think it's appropriate right now that I'm going to pause our recording. I'm going to stop our recording. Yes.